If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who have experienced the paranormal, supernatural, etc., what are your downright scary stories? I was about to turn off my light and fall asleep. Before this, though, I was just kind of looking at my closet past the foot of my bed. It's a sliding door closet that partitions part of my room into storage. So I'm looking at it, and the door starts to kind of sway, and it slides open about half a foot, slowly revealing an inky darkness. I leap out of bed and just close it while it's in the middle of opening and just say, nope, don't do that. After this, I kind of just talk to the room, saying that we needed to share this space and that I didn't understand or appreciate the point of opening my closet. Since then, no problems have arisen, and we ended up moving out. On a hunt, I encountered something in the woods. I thought it was a person in a blue coat. I approached, and something didn't feel right. Despite having a 7 m Magnum and being capable of dropping any animal in Washington, this thing made me back away slowly, in fear. It darted in and out, peeking. Then I moved 7 feet up and peeked, it was solid, then shimmered. I tripped over an old hobo camp. The rifle was ready. I backed away, very scared. I made it to my buddy's truck, which was 200 feet away. I seriously walked backwards, keeping my eye on it. My buddy shows up, he's pale as a ghost. I didn't see anything, he said I didn't even ask, and he was scared, like about to cry. We left without saying what we saw. When my family would visit my grandparents when I was 5 to 8 years old, I was convinced I'd see an outline of a person standing in the basement doorway at night. I was totally sure there was a figure standing there, but it was much too dark to make out any features, and it definitely was not any of my family members, the figure was much too tall. Everyone else would be asleep on their guest beds, and I would be lying there in the darkness, unable to move because I was so afraid, I remember my nightgown being soaked with sweat despite it being freezing in the basement, like I was that terrified. Anyhow, my grandparents ended up moving out of that house, but even then, once in a while, back home, I swear I'd see a shadowy figure peering around the doorway to my bedroom, again, definitely not a member of my family as the figure was much too tall. A few years later, I mentioned it to my grandfather, who jokingly said it was probably a dead soldier looking for his whiskey. When I was five years old, we lived in Ritzville, Washington. A very, very small town. My brother and I had a bunk bed, and I slept on the top bunk. Wetting the bed was a habit when I was younger, and so one night I had to get up and go to the bathroom. I tossed my covers to the side and sat up in bed. Straight ahead at the end of the bunk was a six-foot being staring at me. Its head was oval in shape and spanned almost three feet across. It had beady yellow eyes that were centered in the middle of its face. There was enough light in the room to see that its skin was black. I stared at it for a few seconds, long enough for the image to burn inside my memory, and so I did what any kid would do, hide under the covers. I was unbelievably scared, and I was breathing extremely fast, hoping it would go away. I don't know how long it was watching me, but I could feel it staring at me underneath the covers. I eventually fell back asleep and told my mom first thing in the morning. I always made it a habit to close the closet door in the room before bedtime, and the weird part is, it was open when my brother and I woke up. To this day, I cannot sleep with a closet door open, and I cannot sleep without a nightlight. I've thought about it every single night for 27 years. Sometimes I half expect to see it again. I remember it like it was yesterday. Well, once I got home from college, I started reading and then went to bed. It was a normal night, I thought. So I dream that I'm drowning, and literally another person like me appears in my dream. He smiled at me and said, you're going to die. Then I woke up almost drowning, I wasn't breathing while I was sleeping and couldn't breathe through my mouth, took a deep breath, and went back to sleep, I literally couldn't stay awake, I fell asleep immediately. Then I dreamed I was with a cousin in my room, and we were going to open the door, but I couldn't reach the lock. He looked at me, smiled at me, and told me you're going to die. I woke up again, and the procedure from before was repeated. I fell asleep again, and then in the dream, I'm with two friends, and I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't listen to me. Then they saw me, smiled, and said, you're going to die. I woke up again, but this time I couldn't take a breath, I was literally not breathing, my whole body felt like it had tingles, you know, like when one foot falls asleep, only that I felt it all over my body and it hurt a lot. I also felt a loud ringing in my ears, I felt as if my eardrums were going to break at any moment, and I also felt as if something was on top of me and it would not let me move. I clarify, not so believing, but I was in panic, so I thought of my loved ones and that I could not die yet, so I mentally said, God, get this demon out of me, and, this is where things get unreal, 
I felt my body contorting, I heard the cymbals sound loudly, and then a light came out of my body, and finally I felt like someone had pushed me hard in the middle of my chest, and then I didn't feel anything else. I was able to breathe again, through my mouth. I turned on the light in my room, and there was blood coming out of my nostrils. That night I did not sleep, and I just thought, okay, this is the reason why I could not breathe, and I did not give more importance to the matter, I was trying to convince myself that I had dreamed everything. When it was time to go to university, I undressed and got into the shower. I looked between my chests, and I had a pretty thick cut there and something deep, since there was still blood coming out, and that's when I realized that shit had not been a dream. I don't know, maybe someone was playing Ouija that night with my soul. My dad told me this story. So some years back, around the 90s, my father was going in the late night to his mother. It was pitch black because it had snowed hardly back in time, and so he was going for about two hours. Where I'm from, there is a specific railroad track section that is haunted. Many people lost their lives there because of suicide and war. An interesting fact is that a lot of those people were not originally from my home city or the nearest area but from the larger towns. A lot of people are really scared of that railroad section. They even called a priest to purify that place, but when he came, he was totally terrified. He said he couldn't do anything about it. He told the people that there is really bad energy in the air, and they should avoid that place at all costs because it could end in them losing their lives. But back to the main story, my father went through that shortcut, he didn't want to waste his time, so he decided to go through that section of the rails. He told me he was never that scared in his whole life, and he really saw a lot. He told me that he saw the dead people, his friends and family calling him to come to them, and if he went on further, the train would hit him, it missed him inches. A scary fact is that next to that railroad is a bigger section of the woods where many people committed suicide. My own experience with it was also really scary. When I was walking through it late in the night, I heard screams, maybe I'm mad or something, but I really heard them, and I heard footsteps of really hard boots like those that the soldiers had worn in the war. Next night, me and a good friend of mine went to check it out, but we didn't really stand it up long. The atmosphere of this place was really heavy, we heard screams and footsteps. Our friends didn't want to believe us, but I know what I and my friend heard. My parents used to have the house cleaned routinely while my sister and I were at school. I'm not sure if they still do it. When I was a kid, I would often wake up in the middle of the night and feel like I was being watched. One time I woke up and saw a dark figure standing in my parents' doorway. Their room was directly across the hall from mine. I wasn't sure what to do at the time because I was the only one awake, so I hid under the covers for a while until I got the courage to look again, and it was gone. When my parents finally told us about the deaths in the house, my dad told a story about how he had also woken up in the middle of the night to see a similar figure in their doorway. It stood there, as if to make itself known, and just walked away and disappeared. My parents aren't exactly mediums, but they've had experiences that are supernatural. This is a story my dad told me, when we were on a family float trip, my dad had a dream where he was in this white, open space where it was just him and a boy. The boy was looking at him like he wanted to tell him something, like he needed help, but couldn't speak. My dad spoke out to him and said he couldn't help him. The boy looked disgusted with the answer, turned around, and walked away. My dad told my mom about it, and she thought that it could be someone who drowned in the river and that their spirit was still looming. She looked online for articles about a boy drowning in the area, and sure enough, they found an article about a boy who had fallen out of a canoe and drowned the summer or two before. In my teens, I started seeing an orb. It was just one orb, but it was a black orb. It was literally darker than the shadows in my house at night. I mostly didn't have a problem with it since it would always move away from me. I'd just wait till it was moved on, then go on with wherever I was going. Then one night I was lying in bed when I suddenly felt a blinding pain in my right eye. I felt like someone had punched me. There was no one in the room. I ran to the bathroom, turned on the light, and looked in the mirror. I looked normal. There was no bruising, but just touching the skin around my eye hurt and it felt like there was a massive bruise on the soft tissues. Every time I blinked, it would send a fresh wave of pain through it. I went back to bed and laid down again. Then it felt like someone or something was poking me, jabbing at the bruised feeling with their finger. I rolled to the left. The poking feeling stopped for two seconds, then started up again. I rolled to the right, burying my bruised eye in the pillow. The poking stopped for two seconds, then started up again. It was like something was reaching through the pillow just to cause me pain. I finally sat up, feeling royally pissed. I said out loud, stop it. You do not have permission to touch me. You do not have permission to hurt me. Get your, effing, hands off me. There was a pause, and then the poking sensation stopped. 
the pain in my right eye began to fade. I lay down again, and I fell back asleep. The next morning, my face and I felt fine, and there was still no evidence that I was bruised or physically injured. A few nights later, I woke up to the silhouette of a tall man wearing a hat standing next to my bed. I researched later and found it was a hat man shadow person. This was 2016 in New Hampshire. I was 25. I was lying in bed, staring at the wall. About 10 o'clock at night. The wall began swirling clockwise, like a portal. Two figures came through, they looked to be made of glass. Iridescent, clear, and the surface of the figures had the appearance of running water. They were about 6 feet tall each. Instinctively, I got up and grabbed a legal pad next to my bed and a pen. I began drawing strange, geometric shapes with precision. They looked like mandalas, and the lines were perfectly straight and circular, like they had been made with a protractor. After that, one of the two figures approached me, and I heard a voice in my head telling me not to be afraid. It put its hand on my shoulder, and the next thing I knew, it was 7 in the morning and the sun was up. I would have thought it was a dream, except that the mandalas were still there. I've never been much of an artist, so the fact that the circles were perfectly round and the lines perfectly straight made it seem like the beings were acting through me. I was on a backpacking trip on the Appalachian Trail, and my dad and I stopped at one of the many public cabins. We set our bags down and joined the campfire. It was just us and a middle-aged Asian couple. We begin talking, and the sun sets, so we don't expect anyone else to come. Nevertheless, this huge guy with long silver hair sets his small pack down under the awning and joins us at the fire. He was no less than 6 feet 8 inches, extremely muscular, and had his hair tied back into a ponytail. Imagine a more muscular Geralt from The Witcher. We start talking, and he seems very friendly. Then, my dad asks the man, so, where are you from? No response. My dad repeats the question, thinking the guy didn't hear him. No response. The Asian guy asks the question, and suddenly, the big guy explodes, yelling, I don't know. I don't freaking know. He then takes out a huge bowie knife and a whetstone and starts sharpening them. All of us decide to pack our stuff and book it to the next cabin, which is about 7 miles away. It was a walk, but we eventually made it there, and there was a dirty hippie dude already there. He stunk like hell but was harmless. We stop at the campfire and hang out for a bit, then I see a reflection out of the corner of my eye. I turn around and see the big, silver-haired guy standing in the tree line, spying on us. At that moment, I nearly shat my pants because there was no way all of us could take this guy on. He was built like a WWE wrestler, and we were all under 6 feet. I let the other people know, and the Asian guy took out a revolver and told the man to go the duck off. The big guy stands there for a moment and silently walks off into the woods without making any sound. After that incident, we agreed to have someone keep watch. Since the Asian guy had a gun, he volunteered while we slept. In the morning, I was so glad the big guy didn't come back because an Asian man fell asleep. That SHT still gives me chills. In high school, me and a buddy made the dumbass decision to smoke weed in a graveyard around 8 to 9 at night, summertime, so it was just now getting dark. I smoked to the point of being totally out of it. We were just chilling next to a tree when I saw a man walking down the graveyard. I got a little nervous immediately, but I blew it off. I then see the man pull out a handgun and aim towards something, he didn't notice us at this point, and I couldn't see who or what he was aiming it at. I was so terrified, I thought I was mildly hallucinating, I couldn't even move. My friend hit my side and said, dude, this guy has a ducking gun out, we gotta get the duck out of here. We both slowly got up, but like the stoned idiots we were, we hit a rock trying to get up, and the man finally noticed us. He was a good 200 feet away from us, but the second he saw it, he slowly moved towards us with the gun in his hand. We started running at this point. I looked behind my shoulder once and saw him start to run towards us as well. We booked it out of the graveyard and were finally back in my neighborhood. I was terrified for days after that. This happened back in 2008, just after my family had moved to a rural town in Oregon. I was 12 at the time, and my family and I were driving home after visiting my step-grandparents that evening. It was late, around 11 p.m., and my mom had decided to take the unlit country road home. I was in the back seat with my younger brother, trying to tune out my parents' incessant arguing up front while my brother was zoning out and looking out the back window. Very suddenly, he nudges me and points out the back window, insisting I turn around and look. I'm very tired and irritated with my parents, who at this point won't stop yelling at one another, so I shrug them off. He becomes more insistent, and I can hear fear creeping into his voice. I pull up my hoodie and ignore him. Now he's frantically trying to get my parents' attention, and they're screaming at him to shut up. 
This goes on for a while, but eventually he calms down, although I can hear him turn around in his seat every once in a while to look out the back window. The next day, I asked him what had him all worked up in the car. He describes to me in a shaky voice that something had been following behind the car the night before. He detailed seeing three dim points of blue-white light arranged in a black triangle shape, following closely behind the car, and when my mom would break the tail lights, she lit them dimly so he could see a dome shape in the middle of the black mass. He said it didn't jostle around like a car would when my mom drove over the potholes in the road, and it was following us closely, so he thought maybe it was hovering off the ground. It sounds ridiculous, but he told me this with such conviction and fear in his voice that I know he must have seen something that night. We drove that road many times after and never experienced anything like that again. When I was in fifth grade, I was at my friend's house. We were hanging out behind her house by the lake. Two high school guys came up and saw us. One guy said, oh, okay, we will leave. We both had a strange feeling in our stomachs and left to go to her house. We stayed there for 15 minutes before heading back up to our spot. Once we got there, the two guys were there. They asked if we wanted to sit there, however, we declined their offer and started walking on the dam. After about 50 feet, I hear something behind me, so I look over my shoulder. They were following us. I told my friend that, and obviously, she didn't believe me until she looked too. At that point, they were running after us. We hauled ass as adrenaline started pumping through us. We got to the end of the dam, where the dry waterfall was. I looked over my shoulder and saw that one was following our exact route and the other was attempting to cut us off. Somehow, we managed to outrun them after running for what seemed like an eternity. When we made it to her dad's house, we didn't leave for a long time. We decided not to tell our parents. In hindsight, we should have, but we were scared they would never let us go back up there. It's been about 10 years, and I have only gone up there once since that happened, and I was anxious the entire time. We lived on the mountain, down off in a big hole known as Smoky Holler, a small mining community up until the 1970s. Our road was off the main community road, it led to one of the mines, Mine Road. My older brother, who was about 15 years old at the time, said he was walking home one day and passed a stranger who was coming from the direction of our house. A stranger on our road was unheard of. My brother said he was dressed all in black with a long black coat and hat. And the part that stuck out to me was that he said the stranger was at least 7 feet tall. They didn't speak to one another, but my brother was afraid of him and had a bad feeling. Fast forward 30 years, my brother and one of his friends are driving down the ridge, and they go over the guard rail down the side of the ridge. My brother is thrown out of the windscreen, lands in the woods, and lays there till the ambulance shows up. His friend was still in the truck as it rolled and was killed. As my brother was lying there, he saw the seven-foot-tall stranger walking down the side of the road on top of the guard rail towards him, just walking on the guard rail. He didn't say any more after that, whether he talked to the man or not, or whether the man came close to his friend in the truck. Once I was with a girl on Big Frog Mountain at dusk, miles away from anyone. We decided to walk up a trail when right behind the car I stepped in a mud puddle with odd-looking light brownish water. I pointed the unusual color to her then we started walking. Not far up the trail she started getting scared and we went back to the car. In the car we started making out while lying in the front seat and she had her hand draped out the window. I felt an odd sensation in my back it had happened before when people were behind me and told her to pull her hand in, which she did. A few minutes later I felt the sensation in my back again, but it felt more urgent. I rolled her window up, but being a horny ass teenager, continued with the make-out session. A few minutes later it felt like someone had stuck a live wire to my back. I sat up, started the car and headed back down the mountain. She was obviously confused and asked me what was wrong. I replied that I didn't know, but something was wrong somewhere. We went back to my parents' house and was assured by them the family was okay. Having calmed down some, we ate a little dinner, then started to leave. After I opened the car door for her I walked around the back of the car. While walking I glanced at the back of the car and saw handprints the same color of the mysterious mud puddle on the car. The last one was over the back window, and it was obvious someone was watching us while inching their way to the front driver's side window. When I saw the handprints it was like being hit with a lightning bolt and I knew what had happened. Cold chills ran all over me. I got her out of the car, and as soon as she saw the prints, she knew too. This story is the absolute truth so help me, and I will never forget it. One time, while I was sleeping, I heard a loud pop, similar to a firecracker but not quite as loud. I thought it might have been my computer or some sort of electrical short, so I woke up and looked at my computer to see if there was a fire or something. I didn't see anything in the dark, so I relaxed and shifted to lay on my back to go back to sleep, 
looking up at the ceiling. Within a couple seconds, I started to notice some sort of vague, shadowy figure, as if it were standing next to my bed and waving a hand over me. I've seen shapes like this before, so I watched the hand out of curiosity. Then, the hand went away, and I felt the side of my bed dip down, as if something was pushing down on it. Slow enough, as if not to scare me, yet firm enough to be very noticeable. This was surprising, but I wasn't scared. I looked to where the shadow was standing, and out of the dark, for a brief moment, a reptilian-looking humanoid appeared there, wearing a plain and slightly loose shirt and holding a clipboard with his left hand and holding a pen or something in his right, as if making a note. His head was in profile to me, he turned to his left, so I was looking at the right side of his face. His eye stood out to me the most. He looked concerned, had a round pupil, was fairly large in size, and was almost cartoony looking but kind. I could see scales outlined on his skin, and he had larger scales along his prominent brow. He had a smallish sort of beak or nose, and it looked like his upper lip was covered down to his bottom jaw, aka, no discernible lips or mouth. His shoulders were very broad, more broad than most humans, and he seemed a bit shorter than a typical human, if I had to guess. I didn't see anything below where his elbows sat around his midsection, so I don't know what his legs or feet looked like. The way it looked was like he and his details were outlined in the lights you see when you press on your eyes. That kind of greenish slash yellowish slash slightly rainbowy look quite bright in the dark, but still kind of faint. It was very brief, like a second, but very detailed and in the center of my vision. I have no idea what to make of it, but I'll never forget it. I tried drawing him once, but unfortunately, I don't have it with me. I wonder a lot about it. My old room in my old house is basically a pseudo attic. It's on the same level as the attic and has doors that lead to it. One weekday, I'm playing video games like I always do when I'm tired. I start to hear banging against one of the doors. Not like knocking banging, like let me into your ducking room so I can kill you kind of banging. Something was really ducking mad at me. I thought it was some angry animal that got into my attic through the roof. I called my mom, I was 15, I think, to call my brother, who never answers my phone calls, to come home while describing the situation. He was busy, so she decided to come home to look in the attic. There is nothing in there. I thought for a while that something made me hallucinate. I never did drugs and didn't have any illnesses that made me hallucinate. We moved out, and later, my mom talked with the current house owner while she was out walking. They asked her if there was anything unusual about upstairs, my room, and he basically told her that dogs go to that same door and scratch and stare up at it. It's creepy. I was about 6 years old and lived in an apartment complex in El Paso, Texas. I would always see shadow figures in my apartment, they'd be in the corner of my eye, watching me until I turned the light on. But the most terrifying encounter had to be one day, when I was getting ready for a nap and my parents kept my doors open because I was a troubled child. So I was lying down, and I saw one of those shadow figures walk past my door, turn to look at me, and run away. Another time I went into my room, it was dark. I saw a shadow figure with blue eyes, about 6 feet tall, sitting on my bed, and once he noticed me, he vanished. The chupacabra was in the backyard of my house at 1 in the morning in 1995, in the countryside of Puerto Rico. It was terrifying the noise he made and the footsteps on the grass, and more terrifying was listening to all the altered animals as if they felt it. In the morning, when I got to school, my teacher called me aside to ask me if I had felt something strange around my house that night. I explained everything to him. My neighbor from the front was a teacher at the same school, she had felt everything, and she had told her classmates everything. My teacher told me, the chupacabra was at your house last night. A few days before that happened, something happened to my neighbor, something opened his chicken coop and killed all his chickens. The strange thing is that there were footprints, the same footprints that the investigators said were from the chupacabra. In the middle of the night a few years ago, I saw a figure pass in front of the glow of the alarm clock and into the darkness at the foot of our bed. I thought it was an intruder. I had awakened because I thought I heard our apartment door open and close and then saw the figure. At first, I thought it was my husband, but when I inched my foot over to his side of the bed, I felt him next to me. My heart was pounding so hard that I could hardly hear anything else. Till then, I had always thought it was silly when someone felt afraid that people could hear their heart pound. I get it now. So, after about a minute of staring into the blackness where the figure had disappeared, I grabbed the bedside lamp and threw it at the foot of the bed. I heard it crash into the wall. Get out of bed. Grabbed for the flashlight on the dresser. Dropped it. I made two huge steps to my left and turned on the bedroom light. No one is there. Just my husband staring at me like I had lost my mind, and the lamp lying on the floor. 
I explained what happened. He made a sweep of the apartment, even though the bedroom door was shut and the apartment door was locked, and there was absolutely no way anyone could have entered without making every single floorboard in that old apartment creak to wake the dead. It was 3 a.m. or so on a Saturday, so we got up for some hot chocolate and watched a few episodes of Frasier until we were both able to calm down. I've had sleep paralysis before, and this was nothing like that. Lucid dream? Maybe. Who knows? Where I grew up, there's a road called Indian Cabin Road. It's a long road that intersects several other roads, eventually going from pavement to dirt after a bit. You eventually end up near a river in another town, but for a while you drive through the woods with no guidance except for the dirt road since no phones get signal out there. Now, being from a small town, every kid knows about it. It's almost a rite of passage. I 100% know that if I were to walk up to any local at a Wawa and ask about Indian Cabin Road, they'd immediately say, yeah, that place is haunted and leave it at that. So anyway, my best friend and I decided to find it and drive down there the night of Halloween. After searching our maps and finding the street it forked off of, we drove down in her caprice, thinking all the while, why the duck did we choose the worst car in the world to go off-roading? She's a firm believer in the supernatural, so the whole time she's playing up the fact that it's Halloween and we're driving down the most haunted road in our town. I'm rolling my eyes, trying not to laugh, because, duck it, it is Halloween, and I might as well enjoy the supposed spookiness of it all. We end up driving most of it without realizing it until we reach the part where the road is essentially a dirt pathway. Not even 10 minutes later, my friend inexplicably stops her car and says that she doesn't want to drive down anymore because her car can't handle it. Before I can even reply, I hear her say, horse opera, what the duck is that? In the most chilling, terrified voice I have ever heard in my life. In the tree line, there's what only I can describe as this spinal, skeleton thing staring at us with glowing red eyes. It was on all fours, but its body was stretched out so that its back legs were bigger than its front. It was pitch black outside at this point, but both her high beams and headlights were on, so I am 100% certain it was not a human in a morph suit or an animal or anything in between. It stared at this inky bias creature and started to move towards us. In high stress situations, I usually end up laughing to calm my fears, and at this point, I started chuckling, telling her it was just a wolf, that's nothing to be afraid of. My friend immediately booked it out there, repeatedly asking me what it was and what was happening. All I kept saying, all I could really say, was, it's just a wolf. It's just a wolf. I was legitimately scared, and to this day I have no idea what the duck we saw. We haven't driven down there since, and my friend repeatedly brings it up whenever I mention I don't believe in the supernatural. A couple years ago, my boyfriend and I were driving on the country roads of central Illinois. It was about 9 p.m., cold and rainy, mid-October. Large wooded areas all around. We were in mid-conversation when we both cut off at the same time, and we were overcome with dread. To the right of the road was a six-seven-foot tall pale humanoid. Its arms were disproportionately long and thin. It didn't have any discernible facial features. It peered out from behind the trees and looked directly at us. We were both silent for about 30 seconds, and I finally said, uh, did you see? And my boyfriend says, thank God you said something. I thought I was crazy. A few days later, our two friends were hanging out in their cars in one of the local park areas, surrounded by woods and corn fields. The fields were recently harvested, so you could see all the way to the tree line. They said they saw something pale, incredibly thin, and humanoid across the field. It ran kind of like a dog, and it disappeared into the woods within seconds. At first, I thought it might be something different because I thought what I saw was more humanoid. Then I discovered that thousands of people have reported seeing humanoid, pale, naked, lanky things that move like dogs. There's apparently a particularly high number of sightings in Illinois, so that part adds up as well. There were lots of reports from the 50s and 60s of pale humanoids as well. It really makes me wonder. Anyway, I am now convinced there's an undiscovered humanoid living in America. We haven't proved they exist because they are so fast and silent. They also hide in abandoned buildings, caves, and mines. My sister, myself, and three friends were camping in my friend's fenced-in backyard one night. Three of us were 15, and the other two were 13. We sat in the tent and talked late into the night when we heard scratching on the tent. There was just enough light outside that we could see a silhouette of a person walking around the tent. We thought it was our friend's older brother, so we started yelling at him, Casey, stop trying to scare us. And Casey, leave us alone. He didn't say anything. This tent had mesh at the top so you could see outside, so one friend stood up to tell him off. 
Immediately after standing up and opening her mouth to yell at him, I saw her pale, and she sat back down, terrified. It's not Casey. That sent a chill down my spine. We all shut up and sat there, silently panicking, watching this guy continue to walk around the tent. He must have heard us, but still he stayed. Finally, my bravest friend started yelling at the guy, threatening him, and putting on a big show. We heard him kind of shuffle away, and that's when she burst out of the tent to try and scare him off. She later told me that as she ran out of the tent, she saw this guy standing by the gate into the yard, messing with his pants, like he was putting himself back together. She chased him out of the yard and watched him run down the street and around the corner. We all went inside after that, and I'm still uncomfortable with camping 13 years later. When I was around 15 16, we started getting knocks on our door at around 10 pm at night, once or twice a week. Always around 10 to 11 pm, always three strong, curt knocks. We would also hear the sliding glass door to our sunroom open and slam closed. This went on for about three months. Every time I rushed out to catch whatever it was, I was met with a whole lot of nothing. I remember one night I was chilling in my room with my dog asleep on my leg. My room shared a wall with our sunroom. I hear the sliding glass door fly open. My dog hears it too, and he is instantly awake. I'm out the front door in less than three seconds. Nothing there. Sliding glass door, half open. After that, the knocks became less frequent. Started happening only about once a month. One night I'm out with my martial arts friends, and I get a call from my mom, asking if that's me at the door. I say no, and I immediately rush home. Nothing again. The next night, the knocks come again, and this time I'm standing right next to the door. I pull out my knife and I'm out of that door like a bat out of hell. I see my gate swing open. I sprint out into my driveway. Again, nothing. I wander to the edge of my driveway and see my neighbor, a young ex-marine who lives with his elderly mother next door, standing out there smoking a cigarette. He asks me if I'm looking for my dog. I feel a chill go down my spine. I tell him no, I'm looking for the thing that keeps knocking on my door, my mom had previously told him and his family about the strange knocks. This dude's demeanor instantly changes. He tells me to give him my knife and call the cops. I do, and he gets a flashlight and starts to look in the bushes across the street. It's a windy night. I call the cops, come back outside, and ask him if he sees anything. He tells me he saw what looked like a large dog, running on all fours, bolt across the street into the bushes at inhuman speed. He said he thought it was my dog getting out, but said it had looked bigger than he thought my dog was, a good-sized German Shepherd. When I told him it was the thing producing the knocking, he said it clicked that something was wrong. As well, whatever it was was smart because he could hear it moving in the bushes, but it would only move when the wind blew to mask its movement. The cops show up and start looking around. They find a trampled path leading up the neighborhood just in front of my house, it starts to lead up a hill. My other neighbor from the first house on that hill walks down and asks the cops if they're looking for somebody. They say yes. He says there's someone on his roof. The look these cops gave each other was comical. We're up at the house in 30 seconds, the cops, my neighbor, and my little six-year-old ass. Cops climb up on the roof and can't find anybody. The cop says the only way off that roof is a 20-foot jump over a spiked metal gate. We go around to check it out, and sure enough, there is a trampled pathway leading out into the forest trails on the hill. Whatever was on the roof had, presumably, made an Olympic-level leap off of the roof and over a gothic-style spiked metal fence to escape. The next day, we go out to observe the trail this thing left in daylight. We find, right across the street from my driveway, ISHT you not, a trampled-down nest in the foliage that had the months-old remains of various small creatures. The knock stopped after that. One comes to mind from my childhood in Tennessee. I was told it by an older neighbor of mine who had also grown up in the area. It supposedly happened when he was young. A poor older couple were farming near the river bottoms in Tennessee. One day, a group of young boys were out near their farm and decided to spook the old couple's mule. The mule jumped the fence and ran down to the river bottom, while the boys chased it. The old man searched all over for his mule and finally found it down by the river. He caught it and started leading it back to the farm. On the way up the river bank, he was bitten by a cottonmouth and didn't make it home again. After some time, the wife went out looking in the fields for her husband and eventually found him dead next to the river with their mule. She swore revenge on the boys who spooked their mule and were responsible for the death of her beloved husband. She walked through the fields, through the town, and all along the river, looking for those boys. She never found out who it was, and from that day forward, she hated all children. Years and years passed, those boys grew up, and the woman remained looking for a group of children who killed her husband. 
Sometimes people with kids would find doll heads on spike sticks near where their children like to play. I didn't really believe this story, but a few weeks later, my neighbor called me over to show me there was a doll head on a broken stick over across his yard at the edge of the woods, which led down to the river. I was living in Gainesville, Georgia, at the time. My wife and I had been separated for about a year. I went to bed one night, which was on the couch. Since we split, I have had a hard time sleeping in a bed. Right before I dozed off, or maybe I'd been asleep and just didn't realize it, for all I know, this could all have been a dream. There was a knock on my front door. I went to check it out, and it was raining like crazy. There were two small children standing in front of me with their heads down. What appeared to be the older of the two asked if they could use my phone. Their mother had left them in the rain, and they needed to call for a ride home. I'm not about to leave two kids stranded in the pouring rain, so I invited them into my home. I took them to the living room and had them sit on the sofa while I got my phone, which I charged in my bedroom. When I came back, they were gone. I heard something behind me and spun around to find four children standing behind me, all with pitch black eyes. I immediately panicked and started trying to fight them off, but nothing I did seemed to have any effect. I ran to the kitchen and grabbed a knife. I stabbed one of them, but they still didn't slow down. I then ran to my room, where I grabbed the dot .40 handgun my dad bought me for home protection. I shot a single bullet at them, but nothing happened. By the end of this, I was curled up in a corner while the kids loomed over me, and that's the last thing I remember before waking up in a cold sweat on my couch. I'm a firm believer that dreams have meaning, so I searched kids with black eyes, and much to my horror, I discovered that it's a thing. To this day, I'm not sure what they wanted or what they took, but I'm always cautious when I hear a knock on the door in the middle of the night. One time, me and my friend were in our car late at night after a Whataburger run. It was about 3 a.m., and we were chilling, eating in the car, and joking around. Don't ask why we were up so late, it was my sophomore year of college, and we were pulling an all-nighter for, Lord knows, why. But anyway, we pull into her apartment complex and park perpendicular to the forest surrounding the majority of her complex. As soon as I put my car in park, I felt everything go cold, and I promise you, I felt something in the air. I keep seeing this thing move in the forest out of the corner of my eye, but I think it's just the wind and branches. Finally, I'm like, WTF is that thing, and so I look closer, and it's two huge yellow eyes staring out directly into my eyes. How is it that when I finally look harder, we make direct eye contact? This thing has been staring into my eyes for a long time, I just know it. So I'm like, oh crap, there's a man in the forest to my friend, and we both think it's a police officer at first. I would why we thought that, but once it showed itself, we knew it was no police officer. But then, as soon as I made eye contact with it, this thing started walking out very quickly, coming straight for my car. Keep in mind that my car was on and my lights were on, so this thing knew that I would see it coming. It steps out, and its arms and legs are way too long. It looked like a creature trying to be human, but it wasn't quite pulling it off. The proportions and speed of the movements were all just too wrong and off. I fully believe this wasn't a human with its huge and hollow yellow eyes. It never made eye contact with me. I drove a small Volkswagen Bug at the time, which I know is a small car, but this creature was towing above my car. It was literally the boogeyman. The closer I looked at him, the more scary it got. The more scared I got, the bigger it grew. Its face was covered by what looked like a mask of a human face, but the thing's eyes were definitely its own. Finally, I snapped out of my terror and reversed out of my spot so fast. By that time, he had made it all the way to the front of my car and was touching the hood. I wish I had run it over, honestly. But when I looked back in my rear view mirror to see what was going on, it was standing in the spot I had just been parked in, waving, and staring straight into my eyes through the mirror. I don't know what this was, I've heard lots of things. I think it was a demon, for sure, but that's just me. Back in 2008, I was 15, and I lived on a 300-acre ranch in a small town in Idaho. I lived in a five-bedroom, three-bath 1980s cheaply built home with my parents and sister. My six older brothers had already grown up and moved out. Yes, I know, big family. My sister and I slept in the bedrooms upstairs, just down the hall from my parents' room. Her room was directly across from mine. That year I started having nightmares about dark figures, and then I would wake up around the same time every night, 3 a.m. Well, one night I wake up, look out into the hallway, and a dark figure walks past my door. I blinked a few times, decided I was dreaming, and went back to sleep. The next day, I moved my bed so that when I woke up, I wouldn't look out the door into the hallway, thus making it harder to imagine things walking by in the night. So 3 a.m. comes around again, 
and I wake up to a woman's voice singing this high-pitched, eerie song right next to my ear. There was this dark, heavy feeling in the air, and I stopped breathing. The singing continued, and then, ever so softly, I felt someone or something playing with my hair. Softly running, its hands down my red hair. I closed my eyes and said a silent prayer because I was too terrified to speak a word out loud. As soon as I finished praying, the song stopped, and I heard a scream fade away. The next day, I told my mom about the experience, and she dismissed it as a dream. I forced myself to believe her. It had to be a dream because if it were real, I would never be able to sleep again. Dream or not, I moved my bed back to where it had been the night before. 3 AM came around again, and suddenly I found myself awake, staring at the dark hallway between mine and my sister's rooms. That's when a dark, slender figure walked in between our rooms and stood in the hallway. It turned its head and looked into my sister's room, and then into my room. I went back into my sister's room and then turned to look back into my room again. My heart was pounding through my chest, and all I wanted to do was scream, but I couldn't. I was so scared that I froze. The figure paused and almost smiled. It wasn't a smile because I couldn't make out its face, but it was like it knew it had me. Then, just as I was gathering the courage to scream, the figure got down on its hands and knees and started crawling into my room. I screamed the most pathetic scream of my life and yelled, there is something in my room. My parents flipped on the lights and came running into my room to find nothing. To this day, my parents say I was dreaming, I switched rooms after that, and even now I refuse to sleep in that room when I visit my folks. I don't know what I saw or what happened, all I know is that it did happen. In 6th grade, I lived in a house in a very wooded area. To give you a mental image, my house was placed at the front of a 3-acre lot, and my neighbor's driveway was to the left of my house. I used to take walks on it because I hated wearing shoes, and if you went barefoot in the woods, you would get prickers in your feet. So one day I had like 5 friends over for a sleepover, and we decided to go on a walk down this path. We walked till we got to my neighbor's house and saw that no one was home, but a big golden retriever was on the porch, just hilling. I knew my neighbors very well, and I had never seen or heard of this dog before. Something was off about it, its eyes looked weird, so I pointed the dog out. Not two seconds after I had done that, the dog came running at us, barking madly, and we ran for our ducking lives. Me and my other friend ended up tripping, and I saw my life flash before my eyes as the dog came closer to us. I grabbed my friend, and we sprinted into the woods until we couldn't see the dog anymore. My friend's hand was pretty scratched up from falling, so we decided to head back. We pass the porch again and see the dog. I talked to my neighbors about it, and they didn't know what I was talking about. To this day, I'm not even sure if it actually happened. Update, I talked to some friends about it, and apparently it did happen, and it wasn't some weird-ass fever dream. I once came home from a horse show, and our barn is a pretty good distance from our house. As I was going to unload my horse and head back out the gate, I heard clear as day a whistling, not like a bird or anything, it was clearly a human whistle. There was no one around, just me and my horse, and it wasn't the radio either. Still to this day, I cannot explain it, and now every time I am down there by myself at night or near our gate, I swear someone is watching me, or at least it feels like it. Also, along the same fence line, I've had weird experiences. Me and my BF at the time, we were repairing the fence, and we heard running footsteps that sounded like a shotgun racking getting ready to shoot, but once again, no one was around. The Telltale Lilac Bush is a collection of old-time ghost stories from WV. I highly recommend it. There's one story from there in particular that I know was taken seriously and widely believed by the community I used to live in. If you search WV Ghost Story Priestfield, or Wizard Clip, you can read all about it, it's really crazy. Atlas Obscura even wrote about it. That whole part of the state has a crazy amount of folklore, Shepherdstown, Charlestown, etc. Also, there are some fascinating graveyards in that area with lots of 200-plus-year-old monuments. Also, there was close proximity to Antietam, the site of the creation of the steamboat, and other major historical events. There's also the legend of Fort Sabert in Pendleton County. There really was a war party that came through and about 20 deaths in a massacre during the French and Indian War circa 1740s, with lots of folklore surrounding it commemorated annually at the Treasure Mountain Festival. On a personal note, my dad used to tell us about a giant guy who lived alone up in the woods named Nat Banji. Dad remembered him from when he was a kid. Apparently he was a true strongman and recluse, back when it was all dirt roads and a tree or boulder fell into the road or something, they would go up into the woods and ask him for help. He would come down and move a big tree out of the road all by himself, and he wouldn't talk at all. This would have been in the early 20th century, 
This guy likely died sometime in the mid-late 1940s. My friend was driving, and I was in the passenger seat. It was dark out, and the headlights only illuminated about 60 feet in front of us. Out of the darkness and in the middle of the street comes a giant wolf-like creature about the size and build of a bear. It was bulky, black, had a huge head, and had kind of spiky hair. Something like a cross between a bear and a wolf, but definitively not either. My friend slams on the brakes, and I push myself back in my seat, grip the arm rests, and gasp. I still remember feeling my heart drop into my stomach. The thing ran straight towards us and just vanished, just as we would have hit it. We come to a screeching halt in the middle of the road and just sit there in silence for a second. After I get my breath back, I ask him if he stopped because of the wolf in the road, and he says yes. And I wasn't even sure that it happened until I said something. The whole event was over in about 5 seconds, and it still gives me the heebie-jeebies. I've not been able to convince myself that it didn't happen, but I don't have any good explanations either. Has anyone seen anything like this? I've always wondered. I was living in a moderately remote, about a mile out of town up an isolated road, area of West North Carolina, Andrews, North Carolina, specifically, back in about 2002. My brother and I, who at the time thought each other were asleep and only consolidated our experiences the next day, were sharing a room in a wood cabin nestled only about 10 feet from the mountainside. In the early morning, we heard some pretty unearthly sounds. The next day, we compared them to all the local animal sounds, and none of them were even close. They honestly sounded closer to Jurassic Park fake mechanical-slash-modified whale-slash-dolphin sounds than anything biological I've ever heard before or since, and heard heavy walking on our roof, that then dropped to the front porch of the house, then back to the roof before going away. The next day, we saw footprints in the snow that were, as best as I can explain, most like kangaroo footprints. Way too big to be rabbits, but there aren't any kangaroos in North Carolina. We followed the tracks, and they dead-ended in the middle of our yard, at least six feet from the tree line, with snow scuffs behind them like the kind of stuff you see when someone jumps from a point. But, again, there was nowhere nearby to jump to within any reasonable distance from any bipedal animal or even a human. It was just. Like it took off directly up. I'm not a believer in the supernatural. I usually dismiss most things happily. I don't even believe in religion, etc. But this is one thing that I just can't, despite my best efforts, explain. And I've tried repeatedly since it happened. But I've got nothing. I'm stumped. The most likely thing, on the surface, would have been a cougar, but it doesn't make sense for that. I've heard a ton of cougar sounds, seen cougar prints, etc. They don't match up. None do. It wasn't a cougar. It wasn't even close. I still, to this day, 10 years later, have no idea what it was, and to this day, I'm honestly still a tiny bit freaked out to stay at my mom's house, though thankfully, I've never run across anything like that since. When I was 9, we went on a family trip to China. My family has always been the adventurous type, so naturally we couldn't just go look at the Great Wall or whatever. No, my parents hired a driver to drive us around rural Sichuan to visit yak farms and climb glaciers and shit. So anyway, one night we had to stop in the middle of nowhere, I think we ran out of gas or something, and ended up in what I guess you would call a village, although it was basically a long dirt road with one very creepy hotel and a few corrugated tin buildings. The hotel didn't look like much from the outside, but when you went in the lobby, there was this very creepy, almost Victorian-looking ballroom. The lobby made it seem like a luxury hotel, but when you looked closer, everything was made of plastic or painted cement, like a movie set, and completely falling apart, like no one had stayed there in years. At first, our translator told us they had no room, but I guess she explained our situation, and they came up with a room. While we were checking in, I felt this malevolent presence behind me and turned around. There was a girl who looked about 12 or 13 in a shadowy corner of the room, staring at me with her mouth hanging open. She was barefoot and dressed in rags. At first, I was sad because I thought she must have worked there, and she was only a few years older than me. But then she did this thing with her eyes that, to this day, is the creepiest ducking thing I've ever seen. They went completely round and bulged out several inches from her eye sockets. By the time I got my parents and older brother to look, she popped them back in her head and looked normal. When we got to our rooms, there was mold on the ceiling and cockroaches everywhere. There was one bathroom for the whole floor down the hall. The lights didn't work. I went to pee with a flashlight. I turn it on, and the girl from the lobby is ducking sitting there in the corner of the bathroom, in the dark, with her ducking eyes bugging out again. Just sitting motionless in the dark. Then she starts making this ooh sound with her throat, like the girl from The Grudge. 
I freaked the duck out and ran back to our room. By the time my brother went, she was gone, so naturally everyone thought I was making SHT up or being dramatic. But then, when we went out to dinner, she was ducking waiting for us in the lobby again. This time I made my brother look right away, and he caught the eye thing for a second, which is how I know I didn't imagine it. I don't think he wanted to admit it, but it definitely freaked him out a little bit too. We went to dinner at one of the little tin shacks down the road, and she ducking followed us all the way there and sat down at the table next to us. By this time, I'm close to a panic attack. Every time I'd try to point her out, she'd pop her eyes back in, so the most my family saw was a quick glimpse. They admitted there was something off about her eyes, but other than that, they didn't seem too concerned. We got a lot of stares since there were no tourists in the countryside. But this was something else. I don't know how to explain it, but I was positive she was staring at me specifically, like she wanted something from me. We noped the duck out of there early the next morning. There was a time about 10 years ago when I was backpacking in northern Pennsylvania. Late one night, while I was sitting around the fire, I heard an unfamiliar noise. At first, I thought it sounded like a small child or baby giggling. I was completely alone in the black forest, so I can't imagine a child getting all alone in the forest. Nothing else happened for a good, solid hour. Then, when I let my guard down, I heard an older woman laugh. It's almost as frightening as the witch's laugh in Snow White. Although it was a short laugh, it was very noticeable. No more than 10 seconds later, I heard this demonic laugh again, but much longer this time. Trying to gather my awareness, I jumped up, grabbed my hatchet and knife, and was ready for anything. However, I wanted to curl up into a ball and cry. I was all alone. What was I going to do? With my body covered in goosebumps, I could not even think about sleeping in my tent that night. I waited another hour, drinking coffee by my fire and trying to start alert. But nothing else ever happened. I ended up going to sleep that night for a good hour or two and didn't hear anything else. The next morning, I gathered my things and set off down the trail. Roughly an hour into my hike, I noticed a small cottage near a small pond. This cottage was white with green shutters. The windows were boarded up and didn't seem to have been inhabited for a long time. Did this cottage have anything to do with the laughter? Was something living in that cottage? What was that noise that left me petrified that night? After scoping around the place for a short minute, I kept hiking, only to be met with rain. After hours of miserable rain, I decided to cut my trip short and head out of the woods. I was picked up by a local who had taken me back to my car. A ghost story from Kentucky is here. Decades ago, there was this mountain road on a place called Big Hill. It was the main thoroughfare to get from one county to another, and it wound down the mountain through dense tunnels of trees and down long, sloping curves. As the story goes, a woman was killed tragically, and when the culprit wanted to dispose of her body, he shoved her in an old dryer and pushed it over the edge, down into the woods of the hill. It wasn't unusual for people to dump their waste and unwanted items here, so it would have been just another piece of junk left behind. After that, people started making reports of seeing a woman walking up and down the hill at night, all alone on the dark tree-lined road. People started to say that you should never leave the window cracked when you're traveling Big Hill because drivers have seen her on the side of the road and then suddenly her face in their rear-view mirror. She would hitch a ride from the top to the bottom, and then she would be gone. They always said she was looking for the man who dumped her body, and if you didn't want her hitching a ride, always have your windows up so she couldn't get in. Some years later, due to the traffic use of that road, they actually redid it entirely. I blasted and removed trees, and I actually ended up rerouting it entirely to make it better for semis. You can see the remnants of the old road off in the woods, and the few remnants where the old road looks like it crosses over where they built the new road. After they built the new road, there weren't any more reports of the woman on the hill. The superstition went away, and the talk of her died down. I think about that from time to time, and I imagine she's still there, walking the old forest road where time has forgotten it. I was just waiting to find the one who killed her.